Yep, what's good, original crew, man? We got, we got some different today. We got SpongeBob conspiracies today. What's a good, what's a, a good conspiracy? I mean, I know you about to ask me what is a good conspiracy I done heard. About Spongebob, that's what I'm saying. I know. You ain't heard And I, I have no clue. I have not heard any. So we finna go down the rabbit hole. Maybe, hopefully. Uh, If y'all see this, it's because it, it'll clear. If not, we trying to duck and dodge these, you know, people be out here doing doing the most. That's what you said. Um, but hey, with that being said, before we get into it today. <laughs> Make sure you check out the links in the description box. Down below. You already know where to go if you want to first support. All you have to do is check out down below. Also, if you enjoyed today's visuals. Like it with a thumbs up. We're highly appreciated. But hey, man, let's hop into it. Let's check it out. Let's see what's about you. Ready? All right. All right, let's get it, y'all. Squilliam Fancy Son. Squilliam Fancy Son. Squilliam Fancy Son. Squilliam Fancy Son III is Squidward's rival from high school band class. So, I just took my private yacht across my private lake to my private heliport. He's more wealthy, popular, and talented than Squidward, and he always rubs it in his face. That's right. I'm living your dream, Squidward. Oh, just succeeding in everything you failed in. But I intend to prove that he's a fraud using his wealth to make himself seem more popular and talented than he actually is. He goes to ridiculously extreme and expensive lengths to humiliate Squidward and show his superiority, and I'm gonna prove it. That's SpongeBob is one of my favorite shows from my childhood. <laughs> you said what? I said that has to be miserable. It really is. It, but it's people like that for real, though. Yeah, I know. It's people who like, oh, I got... And just like, live your life. Why are you worried about... Like, and, but the thing is, people people fail to realize money doesn't add value to your life. <clears throat> that's deep, ain't it? Now, that's one of the deepest things I, I ever said, bro. Okay, baby. And don't act like it just flew up on the radar for y'all. Money doesn't add value to your life. Because your life can still be meaningless, but you can be the richest person in the world. Mm. And I was finna say some names, but I, I said, Yeah, let's just keep the, going. The, the devil almost had me, but I. But God said, Who oh, knew? No. And show his superiority, and I'm gonna prove it. SpongeBob is one of my favorite shows from my childhood. Even going back now and rewatching the old ones, it still holds up. You might think, it's just a kid's show, there's no continuity, there's nothing worth theorizing about, but the show constantly brings back characters and references to previous episodes, and if you look closely, you can connect the dots and find some very interesting stories. And today, I'm going to prove that Squilliam Fancyson III is a manipulative fraud. Evidence number one, the pet hospital. We first meet Squilliam in Season 2, Episode 15, Band Geeks. The episode opens with Squidward playing the clarinet and getting a knock on the door. Yeah, uh, we're with the pet hospital down the street and I understand you have a dying animal on the premises. Immediately after, Squidward gets a call from Squilliam. Hello, you've reached the house of unrecognized talent. Please start after the... Sounds as though you've got a dying animal to attend to, eh, hey, old chum? I believe that not only was Squilliam spying on Squidward to know when he was playing his clarinet. That's weird. That's what I'm saying. That's weird energy, bro. And it's like, bro, how old are we to still be trying to bully somebody? Grow up, get a life. But it is people like this for real. I still out here in the world. Net, but he also hired the doctor to come and embarrass Squidward. Yeah, uh, we're with the pet hospital down the street. Pet hospital down the street. We have never seen a pet hospital in Bikini Bottom. Mm. We've only ever seen just the regular Bikini Bottom hospital. True. We've seen this purple doctor fish before, but once again, he's never worked at a pet hospital. We've only ever seen him at the regular general hospital. Well, Mr. Squarepants, it seems you have the suds. Are you ready for your treatment? Then there's this green fish behind him, and we've only ever seen him as one of the many identical paramedics that work at the Bikini Bottom Hospital. We even see him at the end of the episode to take Squilliam away after fainting. So it is very likely that Squilliam hired these two and told them to pretend like they're from a pet hospital just to humiliate Squidward. But this is just the start of Squilliam's elaborate mm -hmm. lies. Mm -hmm. Evidence number two, the bubble bowl. 
In the same episode, Squilliam also says, I'm the leader of a big fancy band now, and we're supposed to play the Bubble Bowl next week. The problem is, I'm busy next week and can't make it, so I was hoping you and your band could cover for us. But we've never seen Squilliam's band before, and despite claiming he's too busy to make it to the Bubble Bowl, he still shows up at the end to watch Squidward's band. So both his excuse and probably his band were made up to pressure Squidward into humiliating himself himself at the bubble bowl. Uh, Evidence number three, Squilliam's friends. In season three, episode eight, Squilliam returns, Squidward leaves for work and conveniently bumps into Squilliam and all of his fancy friends, despite Squilliam not seeming like the kind of guy that would come near the Krusty Krab. He and his friends make fun of Squidward for working as a cashier. Hold it! Don't tell me! You're a cashier! <laughs> Don't lie. Lying always makes it worse. But I believe that this encounter was planned out by Squilliam in advance, and he hired all of those people to pretend to be his friends. Take a look at Squilliam's friends. They're all nicely dressed. You I ain't gonna lie, he don't come off, uh, come off as a as a individual that got a lot of friends. I was thinking it. He come off, as, he come a, off as a little a-ho. A loner. Mm. I won't even go on that route, but yeah, you, you, an a-ho. If you want to go that route. <laughs> yeah. Kind of get the sense that they're fancy, high-status members of Bikini Bottom, but they aren't. This is more like what the fancy rich people in Bikini Bottom look like. These are just some regular Bikini Bottom citizens. Most of them usually don't even wear nice clothes like this. And most of them are regulars at the Krusty Krab and would already know Squidward as a cashier. Right, Daddy doesn't have enough slime! <laughs> These are not the type of people Squilliam would hang out with. I mean, why would Squilliam be hanging out with one of Pearl's teenage friends? At the ah. end of the episode, Squilliam even admits to his whole life being fake. I mean, that's crazy, bro. You, hey, shout out to you, bro. Like, you really been watching SpongeBob? <laughs> I don't watch SpongeBob like this. Yeah. Like, if I do watch SpongeBob, it's not, never to dissect anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I, 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 you finna say I ain't never really watched SpongeBob like this. Yeah, I was. I know you was. Yeah. Made everything up about my life. I have no yachts, jets, or anything. I was only trying to impress you. And then, of course, he quickly says he's just kidding. Is that true? Of course not! I'm filthy, stinking rich! But was he kidding? I mean, obviously, he's rich, but is there a nugget of truth in there? Mm. Evidence number four, the statue. In Season 7, Episode 6, Squidward has to pick up trash for community service, and Squilliam once again conveniently bumps into him and reveals he's cleaned up so much trash the city actually built a statue of him. Maybe if you clean up Bikini Bottom, they'll build a statue of you. Oh wait, they've already built one of me. If you cleaned it up like that, then why is he clean having anything to clean up? Bro, that's what people be like... Money can't buy you happiness, but it can buy you everything else. He, again, he ain't happy. Mm -mm, but, he, but he can buy everything else to make somebody else believe that he's happy. Facts. But deep down, he ain't happy. Money can't buy happiness. True happiness. Me! I cleaned up all of Bikini Bottom in only one week. I believe that once again, this encounter was staged by Squilliam, and he actually paid to get that statue built. As Squilliam tells Squidward about the statue, a female fish admires it and says, Bless you, Squilliam, fancy sim. Bless you. But if you remember, this is one of those friends Squilliam likely paid, making her whole comment feel oh, very sure. fake. By the end of the episode, Squilliam's statue gets destroyed. A police officer approaches, and they have this exchange. This is your statue? It was. Squilliam admits that it's his statue, not the city's. And why else would the officer give him specifically a ticket if it was city property? Evidence number five, the concert. In season six, episode 17, Squidward watches Squilliam play the clarinet at a big fancy concert. He receives a standing ovation, causing Squidward to leave angrily. But I believe this entire concert is a scam. Not only has the audience been paid to cheer, but Squilliam never even touches his instrument. Once again, many of the audience members were part of Squilliam's quote-unquote friends, but we also never actually see Squilliam play the clarinet. The episode opens right after he's finished his performance with the audience cheering, and one member of the audience says, He's such a great musician. He doesn't even have to touch an instrument to be brilliant. Maybe the real reason Squibber leaves so angrily is because the audience cheered for Squilliam even though he never even touched his clarinet. Maybe Squilliam is just as bad as Squidward at the clarinet and he's trying to hide it. Squilliam has gone to some pretty extreme lengths just to humiliate Squidward, but nothing. 
And I That's mean nothing lame. compares to what he does next. Evidence number six, the music college. In the same episode, episode, after Squidward leaves the concert, he's approached by the headmistress of the Bikini Bottom prestigious music college. Aren't you the esteemed Squilliam Fancyson the third, who we all came here to see perform tonight? Bill, you would know that it ain't me. If you were really a fan, you would know. Even if we look alike, mm -hmm. you would know. She mistakes him for Squilliam and That's offers lame, him a position bro. as a professor. Squidward pretends to be Squilliam and teaches a class, only for the police to burst in and arrest him, all while he's being filmed on live TV. And I believe that this is Squilliam's most elaborate and most expensive scheme to destroy Squidward wow. both publicly and legally. This encounter where Squidward gets offered a job is already suspiciously convenient, but listen closely to their exchange. I'm Squilliam Fancy Sam. But didn't you just say a minute ago that your name was Squidward Q Tentacles? It is. No, I mean, uh, no, no, I didn't. Well, that's a relief. I mean, what kind of a moron would go to their worst enemy's music recital? What kind of moron would go to their own enemy's music recital? How does she what? know how that you, Squidward and Squilliam are enemies? Right. If she knew who Squidward was, then why didn't she wow. recognize him? Why would she mistake him for Squilliam? This feels way too much like she was hired wow. by Squilliam to set a trap for Squidward. And if that's not enough, the headmistress's associate is literally just a guy from the paid audience wearing a disguise. He just threw on some glasses to seem smart. Squilliam knew that Squidward couldn't resist the opportunity to teach a music class, even if it meant breaking the law. My very own music class. Then we get to the Bikini Bottom prestigious music college, and right off the bat, there's something very fishy about this place. The building itself is very green and grimy. Parking what? Rawr. Parking. Oh. Parking rawr. <laughs> Bro, I ain't gonna lie, if you pulled up to a college, the building look like this, see what you doing? Turn it around. Cause that ain't, hey, hey, hey y'all can teach me. Cause that name and that building ain't going together. Me, and has a very cheap metal look. Nothing about this says prestigious, except for the big sign on top, which feels like the only new thing about this building. I think there is a very good chance that Squilliam just bought some old warehouse, then stuck a sign and some paint on it to disguise it as a college. I mean, look at these other schools in Bikini Bottom. They all have a very nice structure and a paint job, but this prestigious music college looks like a dumpster. Going into the classroom, not only does it have another one of Squilliam's friends, but if this is such SpongeBob a prestigious Patrick? college, how did SpongeBob and Patrick get in here? Would you two numbs? Cause they ain't, cause SpongeBob ain't getting no money from uh Mr. Krabs. He done took the bait and, and, and got paid. Anything for a little dollar. <laughs> Sell out. That's Such crazy. a prestigious college. How did SpongeBob and Patrick get That's in here? That's crazy. Would you two numbskulls mind telling me what you're doing in music class anyway? Sure. Patrick's New Year's resolution was to learn to play an instrument. They say it was their New Year's resolution to take a music class, but you'd think it'd be harder for them to get into an esteemed music school if they just decided to go to it on a whim. Seems True. like they're just letting in anyone to sell this ruse. Then, both the police, Squilliam and the headmistress, and a live news broadcast show up at the same time to arrest Squidward for impersonating Squilliam. If the extremely coincidental fact that all of these people suddenly showed up at the same time isn't enough for you to believe that Squilliam set it all up, I've got something that's going to blow your mind. Squilliam literally has the police working for him. Squidward Q Tentacles, I'm placing you under arrest for impersonating a genius. If that doesn't sound like he's been paid off, I don't know what does. The lengths that Squilliam goes to humiliate Squidward are insane. He literally builds statues and entire buildings just to make Squidward feel inferior. But Bro, sound like Elon. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna say in the beginning. You, it'll just eat you up. I just gotta say it. <laughs> the, devil, the, the devil on my shoulder. Say it. Say it, say it nigga. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> and then the age over here, you're bigger and better than that. <laughs> and you let the devil win. Say it, nigga, say it. <laughs> man. Oh, man, bro. But is it not Elon? That's sad. I don't know, like, what, like, like what you're referencing. Bro, do you not be on Twitter and see Elon posts? 
They are fucking annoying, bro. I, I have seen And I blocked them. I still get it. <laughs> I have seen some stuff. I don't care for them, but I don't know exactly Bruh, what you I blocked see. Elon, and I still... I don't, That really baby. me. You can't block me. <laughs> that, really, that really pissed me off, though. But hey, look at it. He literally built statues and entire buildings just to make Squidward feel inferior. But why? Why would anyone go why? so far to embarrass an old high school band classmate? What happened between them? What could have caused this extreme level of dedication? Well, unfortunately, we never really get much information on their past. I've spent hours reading through the Spongebob Wikipedia hours? and looking at old episodes, and oh, right. there really just isn't any clues that would explain their weird relationship. I guess we can't solve everything, but either way, that's my theory. Thank you so much for listening. I really hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Wait a second. Wait a second. Season 6, Episode 5, Slide Whistle Stooges. Just a normal episode where Spongebob and Patrick and always Squidward, nothing really out of the ordinary. Except I have one question about this episode. Why does Squidward have Squilliam's robe? That is clearly not the purple robe he usually wears. That is Squilliam Fancyson III's robe. Why would Squidward have this? Unless... They were more than just classmates. Could they have once been oh. dating? Oh. No, distant way. love. That's us. not possible. There's That's messy. That's messy. <laughs> That's messy, though. No. Hey, bro. Hey, y'all, messy, bro. Hold on. Let me see you. They distant love us. See, there's no evidence to support that, right? Don't be intimidated, Squidward. Try to imagine him in his underwear. Oh no, he's hot! No, he can't be. I mean, what kind of a moron would go to their worst enemy's music recital? It's been right in front of us this whole time. Our sources last saw evil harassing teenagers up at Makeout Reef. Ah, Makeout Reef. Good time, good time. Voted most likely to suck eggs in high school. Holy shit! Suck eggs. <laughs> Holy shit. What? I ain't no squirrels gay. <laughs> Holy shit, bro. 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 That y'all on a whole other level. But why level. would they? But still, it doesn't explain like the embarrassing and the hate. Bro, what? you ain't you ain't Did never they have had a bad breakup. That's what I'm saying. It's like you know when they have bad breakups, the exes just be yeah. On that type of time. That's crazy. Hey, now, but that's some, that's some next level. Hey, that's a conspiracy right there. Hey, I ain't mad at it, y'all. I'm running with it. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just like. Bro, that's just number one. So what's the next conspiracy, bro? You know I'm what I'm here saying? for it because I'm messy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for all the mess. No, I'm crazy. Hey, it's, man, y'all spell myself in the comments, Please man. Do. Let us know y'all thoughts about it in the comment section down below. But until next time, y'all know how it go, man. I do go by the name DJ New Kid. This is We are. We are.